What's up everybody? We're here working on the car, uh, on the motor again. Kenny's joining us today. What's up guys? Next step is going to be gapping rings now because we cleaned our, our cylinder walls, we deglazed them, we just installed new piston pins onto our pistons and so now it's, it's time to gap the rings and we're just that one step closer onto installing the crank and the pistons in and everything's all set up. We have the block here. The block here is ready to go. We set up this little bench right here. We have our ring filer. That's kind of set up to go. And then we have our workbench down here, which we're gonna be working with. We numbered our rings, because this is gonna go into each individual cylinder. This is the way you wanna do it. Each ring pack goes into a certain cylinder. Don't crisscross them. Don't just do one ring pack and then do the same thing for every one of them because those walls might be just a little bit off. It might not be much, but they might be a little off. So that's why when you do your measurements, you want everything to be in its corresponding home. Now, we did some quick measurements here that I wanna to explain to you guys. With the Wisco pistons, they gave you this little chart right here. And this is gonna basically, unless you have certain gaps you run, this is how you're gonna start gapping your rings. And I'll explain how all this chart works. So first, you want to get your bore size and my bore size is 87 and a half millimeters we need to convert that to inches and in inches that is 3.444882 we're going in ten thousandths because if you look at this chart right here these are in ten thousandths so the ten thousandths converts to 3.4449 that's us converting this number to ten thousandths we're rounding up so this is our bore size in inches when you get your bore size for our top ring, we are choosing, let's zoom in on this. We're gonna choose the circle track drag race application and the top ring is 0 0.0055 inches. So we get our bore size, 3.4449. We multiply that by the top ring gap, which is 0 0.0055. That gives us 0 0.0189, round this up to 19 thousandths. So our top ring is gonna be gapped to 19 thousandths. Hmm? That's hundreds, hundred thousands. No, it's thousands. It's 10 thousands. No, it's 10 hundreds thousands. thousands. Yeah, got me. <laughs> <laughs> so the second ring is gonna be the same, the same process except we're choosing what they call for the second ring. So if you look right here is our drag race, 50.0055 is top ring, second ring is 0.006. So we're gonna do that. Now we multiply this, our bore size, by that number for our second ring, which gives us 0.0206, round that up to 21 thousandths. So top ring, 19 thousandths, bottom ring, 21 thousandths. So to get started, we got our first ring pack. We labeled it number one, because number one is gonna be for number one cylinder, which is closest to where our chain would go. These top, you're only gonna be working on, like I said, the first two rings, so it'd be these two rings right here. And uh, yeah, hook me up, Kenny, here we go. So they have little markings on them. Can we get it to focus? So as you can see that writing, anytime you see that writing, that's how that ring is gonna face. That's gonna face up. You always wanna see the writing on there. And the second ring has the same writing, but if you put, yeah, this one's a lot easier because this ring is actually a little darker. The darker ring is your second ring and it's, it's actually a little thicker. So we're gonna be focusing on this ring right now since that's our first ring. So we're gonna put this one to the side. Kenny's got the first ring. He's gonna show you exactly how to do it. You're gonna start with the back Kind of, don't squeeze it too much, but when you're just gonna squeeze a tad and then swing it right down. Just exactly how he did it like that. So now the ring is started. This is where you would use like a squaring tool. I don't have a squaring tool. So what I did is I grabbed an old TSX piston. It's a little smaller. This is an 87 mil. These are only half a mil over. So what I, I did is you just grab a ring, put it on your second you put it on the second ring and that's gonna stop the piston from going down any lower. With the second ring here, this is gonna be our stopper. Just try to center it up on your piston and you're gonna go right over your ring. Just push down and that's gonna square our ring up. I just turn the piston a little bit to make sure it's square all the way around. Pull up, now our piston is squared in here and you can actually see how tight that gap is. 
So we're gonna grab a set of feeler gauges and we're gonna see what that gap is and how much we're actually gonna take off. So we're gonna start with a 9 thousandths gap on the feeler gauge and we're just gonna, this is gonna see where we're at. Yeah, good call. So 9 thousandths fit. Let's see if we can get a 10 in there. Ten doesn't quite fit. So we're gonna call this gap nine thousandths. We need to get this gap to nineteen thousandths. So we need to open it up ten thousandths. So before we get started, just to talk about the ring filer a little bit, this is obviously a manual ring filer. When you're using these manual ring filers, you always spin it inwards or counterclockwise. The reason you do that is one, there is a coating on these rings that when you are filing them, for some reason, and I don't know the exact reason, when you file inwards, it doesn't remove that coating as if you were going outwards, it might remove it going out. The second reason is you want that burr to come inside. So when you're filing in, the burr will end up around this area and not on the outside. So if you don't file this ring correctly with a hand file after you're done with this, you don't scratch your cylinder walls. Now squaring it up takes a bit of a feel thing. So the way I, re I figured it out is you always, file one side of the ring, I should mention that. So pick one side you're gonna file. In my case, I'm gonna do this side and you only file that side. So we're gonna file it, check it, file it, check it. And every time we're gonna just keep filing this side. So I'm gonna square it up right against here. When you square it up, it needs to be butt perfect, uh, uh, parallel with your cutting wheel. Because when you finish filing, you need these two ends to butt without a gap. You want no gap on these and it's always good to check them before you start to see. So now we got all this set up. I like I put a little pressure on the end that I'm going to file and a little pressure on this end. And now we're going to come in nice and easy. Now very little increments is when we're going to start cutting. Just one or two turns and we're going to go check it. It's not going to take much because this is a diamond cutting wheel. So I just spun around four times. I'm gonna clean the bird off of this ring and we're gonna go check it again. So the last one was nine, right? Let's try 10. Okay, 10 fits nice. It looks like it's uh, not straight because 11 goes, but it doesn't go all the way. It stops right there. You right? Yeah. I see it. The back is tighter. Yeah. All right. So we're gonna try to get this straight. After about 20, 25 minutes of fiddling with just that top ring, we finally got the gap where we wanted it. It's 19 thousandths. Uh, it should still be in the cylinder. So there it is in the cylinder. Pretty straight, I want to say for my eye. Camera might make it look a little different, but ring one is done. Now we're gonna do the second ring. We're going to probably walk through that one really quick. We'll show you guys that one. Then we're gonna fly through the rest of these rings because this is definitely a time consuming job. Have a lot of patience when you are gapping rings. Just do very, very little at a time. I'm doing maybe one or two spins on the filer just to be as precautious as I can. And I'm taking off like one or two thousands every time. Right, Kenny? It's like one or two every time. Yeah, about, yeah. So it's, it's, a, it's, it's very tedious. Well, actually, one or two was with like four stones. Okay, so then I think, yeah, because we got up to like 16 or 17 thousands, 17. 17. And then that's when I was really just trying to be careful and make sure that that ring was squared every time in the filer. So just, so be very careful and take your time. So we're, we're good with that. We're gonna put the second ring in there now. We're gonna see where, what we started at. It might be the same, it might be like nine thousandths. We're gonna work our way through it. It's a lot bigger than that. It's a lot bigger? Yeah, I'm at 14. It's like nothing. Oh, it just slides in there? Yeah. What was our number again? 20, 21, right? Yeah, second ring is 21. 16. And you can see his play. Go to 19. Oh, 
Did that slide in there? Yep. Nah. 19 slid in. Shit. Well, maybe we don't have to gap this one. 22. 20. 20 is a little tight. 20 has got resistance? Yeah. 20 has some grab. Okay, put 21 in there. This one's a lot tighter. It's grabbing. This one's grabbing more. That's like, that should 21. be the gap. And 22 is not. Let me see that one so we can show that it is 22. 22, you got a force. Put 21 in there again. Let me see that. Wow, that's perfect. Okay, so we did some research. We were looking into Wisco's website and everything, and we came to the determination that we actually got really lucky with this ring pack. So that second ring, as you saw, is the 21,000s that we're looking for. And that was without us even touching the ring. Now, after doing some more research on this, if it was 22,000s, which is over the number we want to use, we would have to go to a bigger ring pack size so we'd have to go to like an 88 mil set of rings because these are 87 and a half so as long as we go through each second ring on each cylinder and they are at 21 thousandths we're good that's where i'm going to run it at because that's the number i decided to pick after doing our math top rings 19 second ring is 21 so now we're going to go through each cylinder i'm not going to just sit here and bore you guys with all of that but we're going to start gapping all of the top rings for each uh cylinder we're gonna double check the second ring on each cylinder for each of the rings. And once we get all those set up, then we're gonna start installing the rings on the pistons. So we'll jump right to installing rings on the pistons. the final point of these uh, rings and that's going to be installing them onto our pes our pistons we took all that time to gap all of them all the gaps are good we tri triple checked all of that cleaned all the burrs off of them took the old rings off of our pistons now we're going to start installing the new rings you always start with your control ring so we're going to grab the squiggly one right here this is going to go on first when you do it make sure you keep your ends that uh focus on that they're gonna be facing up not upside down like that where those ends go down you need these two ends to be facing up so they can butt up against each other like that so this one's gonna go on first so this one you don't even need a tool you could just work it on nice and easy like that and then you're gonna grab the very thin ones these are usually stuck together and these are gonna go on top and on bottom of this control ring right here or the spiral ring so again they're so flexible you don't need the tool just work them on there okay, loosen that up okay make sure these are butt up against each other Okay, so we got the bottom one on, top one on right here. Okay, so we're not gonna worry about clocking these rings right now because we're gonna worry about that when we install them. I'll show you the way they're supposed to be oriented at the end though, but I'm just putting them on right now. Next is gonna be our second ring. 
which is the thicker, darker color one. So for this one, I put in the tool. Make sure, like I said, this number is always facing up or any kind of uh, dot or symbol. That always means that's, that's how the ring faces up. We're gonna put it right in our ring tool. Work that one on. Right to its spot. Then just help it on. Okay, so the second ring is on. We're gonna get our last ring. Same thing, look for that number. It's hard to see on this one. That's gonna be facing up. Now this one is a little harder to hold. So just be careful with this one. Once you got it. Okay. There we go. All the rings are installed. And then we'll, like I said, we'll gap them right before we install them. That's pretty much it. Clock them. Clock them, uh, clock them yes. Clock them before we install them. <laughs> All right, that's a wrap on our pistons. Pistons are all completely set. They are ready to be installed. Uh, like I said, I am gonna show you the clocking procedure for those rings. Kenny has the paper right here from Wiseco. So Wiseco recommends this way of install of uh, clocking your rings and where it should show, okay, here's the front of your engine. So if the, you know, you're looking this way, cylinder one, this is the way you should clock them. Your oil rings, your uh, first, your top ring, your second ring. So in case you guys are interested, this is the way I'm gonna be doing it, but just not right now. You're good, Van White, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so that's it. Like I said, now the pistons are done. That's all complete. The next step is going to be now sizing up my main bearings. The main bearings need to be sized up. I am gonna have to torque down those rods without the bearings first, because then I'm gonna be sizing up the rod bearings in there. So I'm gonna find a way to hold those rods because I don't have a, a rod vise to hold that so I can torque those caps down and take a measurement, but that'll be in another video. We're gonna take a break right now and then we're gonna get ready to throw our crank in. So thank you for watching this video. If you're new, hit subscribe and hit the like button if you like this. This is definitely good information to take if you are rebuilding a K-Series. As you can see on his sweater, it's a super guy, but he's gonna, he's gonna learn today how to build a K-Series. I'm gonna teach him how to do it. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Stay motivated and keep making those streets louder. Peace. <laughs>